It's a wild life in the mountains. Creating a home in the rural northern Pocono or southern Catskill Mountains is definitely committing to living a wild life. Not because of the local party animals, but due to the wide variety of animals that we encounter living here every day. It seems like there are critters everywhere. But it's nothing compared to the amount and diversity of wildlife that was here in the 1800s. Newspaper articles and stories from the 1800s chronicle not only the variety of animals, but also the quantity of animals living in the mountains. Stories of panthers wandering mountain trails, elk roaming the Pocono Plateau, flocks of passenger pigeons, and golden eagles flying along the mountain peaks. There were even sightings of the Lenape hunter, or hairy man spirit, that many people often associated with Bigfoot legends. Lenape tribes still tell the story of the spirit hunter roaming the Catskill and Pocono Mountains. It was also in and along the Delaware River that there were so many rattlesnakes in the 1800s that a man could easily earn a living by hunting them. A rattlesnake skin would fetch 50 cents, or about 1350 in today's dollars. Or one ounce of snake oil would be worth one dollar, or about $27 today. The skins were used for belts and shoes, and the snake oil was used in so-called cures and supplied the industry of snake oil salesmen in the Northeast. Rattlesnake oil was often mixed into addictive drugs like cocaine or opium and sold as a cure for ailments or a way to boost general overall health. These products were often found in traveling medicine shows that passed through the region. Many of the remedies sold didn't even contain a single drop of snake oil. Snake varieties that are found in the Pocono and Catskills include mainly rattlesnakes, copperheads, grass snakes, ring neck snakes, black water snakes, northern water snakes, milk snakes, and garter snakes. The only venomous snakes are copperheads and rattlesnakes. These days, fatal snake bites are rare. When walking through the woods, along bodies of water, or exploring rocky areas, it's important to be aware of your surrounding to avoid encountering these reptiles. By 1894 in Pennsylvania, it was certain that many of the animals were vanishing because of overhunting. Many hunters in Pennsylvania, in order to earn an income, often supplied East Coast restaurants with wild game for their menus. In addition to over-harvesting animals for food, the trapping of fur-bearing animals for coats took its toll. And with the timber industry clear-cutting forest, natural habitats were destroyed. You could also add in runoff from coal mining, waste from factories, and raw sewage being dumped into the rivers, poisoning the habitats of many animals. As a result of vanishing animal populations, the Pennsylvania Game Commission was formed in 1895. Pennsylvania was able to rebuild a diverse population of wildlife, with over 480 species of mammals and birds found in the area today. So what kind of animals are still in the Poconos and Catskill Mountains? One of the best known success stories is the return of the American bald eagle, from only a few nesting pairs to over 100 nesting pairs. The elimination of lead shot reduced lead poisoning in birds, and banning the pesticide DDT played a huge role in the rebound of eagle populations. Along with eagles, peregrine, and red-tailed falcons, great blue, black crown, green herons, great horned, barn, and soft wet owls, as well as osprey, thrive in these mountains. Living in the Pocono Mountains, we see birds like this every day, including this turkey vulture we caught sunning itself in a tree over the summer. Wild turkeys have made a comeback as well. In the entire state of Pennsylvania, there were only about 3,500 birds left due to overhunting and the clearing of habitats in 1900. It took until 1950 when the state's new forest started to mature for the turkey population to recover. 
and now there are thousands of birds in each county. While turkeys mainly eat plants and insects, birds of prey rely on fish and smaller animals as a food source. Many species of fish, such as trout, bass, walleye, perch, and panfish to name a few, are found in the lakes, rivers, and streams of the Pocono and Catskill Mountains. Predators also eat small animals like rats, mice, and voles, which are plentiful. The elusive wood rat is rare, but may be found in certain mountain areas of the region, along with the more common Norway rat. Mice varieties include the deer, house, white-footed, woodland, and the meadow jumping mouse. As the weather gets cold, some mice seek shelter indoors. House mice are common and love to eat household soap in addition to anything else they can scavenge. Related to mice, voles are mouse-like creatures that live in shallow burrows. The meadow vole is often referred to as a field mouse. Other species found here include the redback, woodland, and southern redback voles. Often thought of as flying mice, the Pocono and Catskill Mountains are home to many species of bat, including the brown, northern long-eared, Indiana, small-footed, silver-haired, tri-colored, red, and hoary bats. Bats that hibernate over the winter are susceptible to white nose disease, which has reduced the bat populations in the region by over 99%. Another threat is people exploring caves in the winter, disturbing the hibernating bats, causing them to use up energy and reducing their ability to survive the winter. Although most people fear bats, they eat insects and play an important role in keeping mosquito populations under control. Birds of prey, fox, possums, skunks, and snakes also rely on small mammals as a primary food source in addition to fish and frogs. The fox is an opportunistic creature that hunt mice, rabbits, rats, woodchucks, possums, porcupines, chickens, bird eggs, squirrels, game birds, songbirds, fruit, and even domestic cats. They can be found close to populated areas and don't seem to be bothered living around people. One of the fox's food sources includes hares or rabbits. Although closely related, hares differ from rabbits because they have a different digestive tract. Snowshoe hares live on the mountain plateaus of the Poconos, and the more common cottontail rabbits live in bushy areas where the ground cover is good to avoid predators like fox and bobcats. The bobcat is generally a nocturnal animal and are rarely seen by people. Another elusive predator is the eastern coyote. In the 1960s, the coyote migrated through the Catskills to the Pocono Mountains, which had the largest coyote population in Pennsylvania in the 1970s. By the 1990s, coyotes had spread throughout the entire state water-based animals are the most fun to watch. Beavers are found in many lakes and wetlands in the Northeast. Living in colonies and considered rodents, beavers are generally shy, and young beavers live with their parents for up to two years before traveling downstream to find their own territories. Other water-based animals include river otters, mink, and muskrats. River otters frequent local bodies of water including the Upper Delaware River. They are curious and playful creatures that enjoy swimming close to kayaks and canoes, observing the strange creatures passing through their domain. A relative to the river otter, the fisher, is not a water-based animal, as its name would imply. It is closer in resemblance to a weasel, and is known for its ability to prey upon porcupines, both on the forest floor and in treetops. Porcupines are seen from time to time in the woodlands, and we came across this fellow while walking on a trail in Lackawaxen Township. The porcupine's ability to climb trees was quite impressive and is their first defensive option when encountering a predator. 
Other animals that live close to humans include skunks, squirrels, chipmunks, and raccoons. Skunks are nocturnal scavengers, often seen around homes and campgrounds where scraps of food may be found, and they protect themselves from predators by discharging a stream of a foul-smelling musk and is truly a repellent to all mammals. The skunk can shoot its musk about 12 feet, so if you encounter a skunk, keep your distance. Another night stalker is the raccoon. Raccoons are omnivores and will eat just about anything, but they are particularly fond of berries, apples, nuts, insects, worms, fish, frogs, and crayfish. During daylight hours, the raccoon spends its time in treetops. Squirrels and chipmunks also travel in treetops. They eat mainly berries, seeds, and nuts, and store food for the winter. Chipmunks often eat food on the spot, leaving behind piles of shells and husk. Another animal that likes to live close to people, where there's plenty of food and ground cover, is the region's only marsupial, the possum, which comes from the Native American word meaning white animal. They are generally non-aggressive, shy, solitary creatures attracted to the edges of suburbs and towns, where there are wooded areas and streams. Possum raised their young in pouches on the mother's abdomen, very similar to the kangaroo. As a defense mechanism, possum will either climb a tree, hide in a bush, or play dead, also known as playing possum. The woodchuck, also known as groundhogs, also live on the edge of human development. The groundhog lives in a barrel that often has several entrances for easy escape from predators. An average-sized groundhog can burrow into a garden and destroy it in a matter of hours. Although they look like a cute and cuddly little animal, they are far from it, and when cornered can be aggressive and dangerous by utilizing their sharp teeth and claws. Black bears also have sharp teeth and claws and may be dangerous in certain situations. Bears are prevalent throughout the northeastern United States. Seeing a black bear is quite common during the summer, spring, and fall months. They can be found scavenging food from household garbage cans or dumpsters. If you live in upstate New York, western New Jersey, or eastern Pennsylvania, chances are good you probably have a black bear story. There are thousands of videos on the internet of black bears ravaging bird feeders, hanging out in hammocks, swimming in pools, or lounging in backyards. Most black bear can be driven off by banging pants together or making a loud noise. When hiking in the spring, it is important to be watchful not to accidentally get between a mother and her cubs. The black bear is an accomplished tree climber and can run quite fast, so trying to outrun them might be a long shot. A good deterrent is to keep bear spray handy if you're hiking in forest areas known to be inhabited by black bear. In the wild, black bear are mainly vegetarians and love fruit and berries. They have been known to explore porches and enter homes, as in the case of our bear story. The Intamin's Eating Bear, our friend and neighbor, worked as a delivery driver for Intamin's, a donut and pastry company. In their house, which bordered state game lands, he often stored boxes of Intamin's donuts and pastries in his kitchen. One morning while on his delivery route, a bear walked up the stairs onto his deck, pushed open the screen door to the porch, then opened the house door, walked into the kitchen, and proceeded to eat every box of donuts, cake, and pastries it could find. The man's wife, hearing the noise in the kitchen, discovered the bear and ran to hide in a bedroom closet and called 911. The responding emergency vehicles scared the bear away 
who had eaten hundreds of donuts, cakes, and pastries. We later found out from Gameland officials that they often use baked goods as bait to lure in and trap a nuisance bear so that it can be relocated for safety. These are some of the more common animals that we share the outdoors with. And there are many more birds and animals that live in the Pocono and Catskill Mountains. We hope to cover more of them in future episodes. Observing animals in the wild can be entertaining and informative. To learn more about wildlife, conservation, or hunting in the Pocono Mountains, visit the Pennsylvania Game Commission website at pgc.pa.gov. To learn more about animals, conservation, and hunting in the Catskill Mountains, go to the New York Department of Environmental Conservation website at dec.ny.gov forward slash outdoor forward slash hunting dot html. I'm Lorraine Collins with Davis R. Chant Realtors. With over 50 years of serving the Lake Wallenpaw Pack region, Chant Realtors sells more homes by volume than any other realtor in the area. The Lake Wallenpaw Pack area is an attractive place to live because of its low taxes, great school districts, and beautiful scenery. Agents at Davis R. Chant Realtors have an extensive knowledge of the local market and experience with everyone from first-time home buyers to experienced investors. Chant uses a variety of print media, billboards, open houses, and national websites to promote properties and reach buyers. We work with sellers to put together a thoughtful but aggressive market plan tailored to each home individually. Here at Chant, we know that working together and providing channels of communication and feedback is important for the best outcome when selling your home. We provide a unique feature called Seller's Dashboard to our sellers, which allow you to view up-to-the-minute online information about your home, including how it is being marketed, how often it is being shown, and notes from agents and buyers. If you are ready to relocate, upgrade, downsize, or know anyone who is considering the Lake Region, please stop by or call Davis R. Chant Realtors at 570-226. 4518 or visit us online at chantre.com. The Sterling Business and Technology Park is currently divided into 23 lots ranging in size from 3 to 30 acres. Each lot in the park is KOZ certified for companies that qualify. The Sterling Business and Technology Park is perfectly located just off exit 17 on Interstate 84 in northeastern Pennsylvania, just under two hours from New York City. If you would like to explore locating your business at Sterling Business and Technology Park, visit sterlingbusinesspark.com. For 20 years, Holly's Winterfest has attracted people from all over the world to this small, historic, northeastern Pennsylvania hometown with a long history of community celebrations dating back to 1884, merchants decorate their shops for Holly Winterfest. With Mother Nature often adding her own special magic to the event. Winterfest was started in 1999 to celebrate Holly's historic roots. But following the events of September 11, 2001, the focus changed to include building and honoring a strong sense of community. It didn't matter if you lived here or were just passing through, you became a part of the local tapestry. Well, we came up for the Holly Winter Fest. It looked exciting. We love to watch Hallmark movies, so we thought this would be a great way to celebrate the holiday. It looked like a Hallmark moment, so. Feels like it, too. Yeah, and now it's snowing. With the Holly Public Library anchoring the event by hosting the official Winterfest ice sculpture and providing high traffic locations to important charitable organizations.
and don't miss riding the vintage Storebridge Line train to Honesdale and visiting the birthplace of the American Railroad. Spend time with Santa and enjoy free candy canes on the return trip home back to Holly. Back in town, take a horse-drawn carriage ride down Main Street and imagine what life was like over 100 years ago in a town booming with textile, glass, mills, and the coal industry. Join festive holiday shoppers perusing local merchants offering one-of-a-kind gifts. Buy reindeer food. Or make your own unique gifts for the ones you love, including handmade Christmas ornaments or even a special hand-painted glass or vase. As you wander through the shopping district, there are a wide variety of local restaurants and taverns offering Winterfest specialties. Like the Ridge Boys Sausage and Pepper Sandwich Stand. Gather around bonfires and talk with friends or enjoy holiday displays and decorations before attending one of the many musical events. The annual Cookie Walk features over 30 varieties of more than 5,000 cookies. But if you don't get there early, you'll miss out on all of these homemade treats. Sharing the holidays with a furry friend? You can have their picture taken with Santa to help support local animal shelters. Over the years, Winterfest has grown to more than over 50 events. Some, such as glass jewelry making demos, where you can watch as one-of-a-kind pieces are masterfully crafted before your eyes. On Main Street, there were strolling Victorian characters and ice bars offering a host of festive libations. Throughout the area, there were art and artisan events, including the Art Under $100 Art Sale at the Dorflinger Glass Museum. Also offered were Glass Museum and historic Dorflinger House Tours, as well as glass cutting and etching demonstrations. Some other events included Victorian Santa and Mrs. Claus, holiday toy drives, several meticulously crafted open houses, and a beer tour featuring locally brewed craft beers at Holly's own Wallen Paul Pack Brewery. For more information on Holly Winterfest, visit hollywinterfest.com. And to learn more about the historic town of Holly, Pennsylvania, go to visithollypa.com. Hey everyone, it's Jim Hamill here in downtown Milford at the historic Milford Theater, which has been around for about a century or so, and this year hosting the Black Bear Film Festival. And just within the last year, Milford Hospitality Group has pumped a lot of money into this place, bringing it up to modern day technology and seating and a lot of other things, as well as taking over a number of other properties in town from restaurants, bars, and hotels. We wanted to show you what Milford Hospitality is doing for this town. It was the triumphant return for the Milford Theater. Film lovers out for the grand reopening of the iconic space after months of hard work to give this historic theater a facelift. Their jaws were on the floor when they walked in because you know, Black Bear has, uh, this was their 22nd year of celebrating films and having the festival here in Milford. And obviously COVID, you know, we didn't have any festival last year. 
Um, so the last time they were really in here was when it was what it was. Now the theater has 250 brand new seats. The screen is new too. And the audio visual equipment is designed for the best experience possible. That's something the new owners of the theater and a half dozen other properties in Milford are doing a lot of these days. Uh, we started with the Jive Bar and Lounge, which has been established, small corner bar in Milford here on Broad Street, and then just quickly started, you know, with Tom Quick, Laura Villa, Hotel Four Share, 403, um, Bar Louie, and then obviously the Milford Theater is a huge piece of the portfolio. So just kind of reviving Milford after the pandemic is super awesome. Gary Wilson and Beth O'Neill are just two of the many team members for Milford Hospitality Group, revamping some of the key spots in Milford to build upon Milford's appeal as a destination. We just see a future in hospitality and entertainment for Milford, and that's kind of what we're building with the theater, with the speakeasy, with the golf club, just instead of creating a day, creating a weekend, creating a destination and making it more of a weekend getaway and not just an overnight stay. Milford Hospitality not only has the Tom Quick Inn, Jive Bar and Lounge, and Hotel Faucher with Bar Louie on its roster, but also the historic Forest Hall, which served as part of the Yale School of Forestry and will eventually have life breathed back into this opulent hall for events like weddings and banquets. But the centerpiece of Milford Hospitality's repertoire remains the theater. It was always designed to be the hub, the center of everything that we're building so that um, at every turn, we're focused on sending people to our restaurants, our bars, and our beautiful other properties, and also to all the shops in town. And the reviews for the renovation are in. The team that worked on this theater did a fabulous job, and they were working up literally to the last moment. It's very high tech. Uh, the, all the seats have been changed out, redid the walls and the screen. All of the projection and sound is top of the line. I mean, they, they, they spared no expense for this theater. The Milford Theater's upgrades include a brand new bar in the lobby that serves beer, wine and spirits, plus your typical movie concessions. All this investment in Milford is not just one company. Others, including Better World, have laid stake on Milford's future. The store and cafe on Broad Street is a healthy living store, meets foodie paradise, organic coffee and tea, and tons more to complement the big moment Milford is having now and for years to come. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Tune in to Wally Life every Monday at 9 p.m. on Blue Ridge Communications Channel 13 for the latest in life around Lake Wallenpawpack.